So this morning, I want to just have a, a little chat about um, a CD that meant a lot to me at the time when I got it and I played it to death. But now it doesn't, doesn't really mean anywhere near as much to me. What am I babbling on about? I'm talking about extreme Three Sides to Every Story from 1992. Now, I didn't get this in 92, I got it about 98, so five years later, roughly. Um, I saw it in a second hand store in Manchester. Uh, mainly do books, they're still there actually. Uh, they keep strange hours, it's mainly just weekend. And I saw this and I thought, ah, four quid, what can go wrong? Obviously I'd heard of Extreme, I'd heard the hits, everybody's heard the hits. Um, and I thought, yep, yeah, give it a go. I hadn't heard anything off this particular CD, three sides to every story, but I wasn't taking a risk. Four pound, what's four pound? It's nothing. Loose change. And when I got it on, I really liked it. And I, as I say, I played this thing to death. Really loved it, particularly um, the final part of it. It's in three, three different uh, sort of sections, I suppose you call it. It's meant to be um, some kind of concept record. Uh, the first side is called Yours. The second side is called Mine. And the third side is called And The Truth. So Yours, Mine and The Truth. So your side, my side, and the truth. So three sides to every story. And that's always stayed with me, that. Because I thought, actually, that's, there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, when someone tells you a story, I imagine a police officer, for instance, or a detective, would have to consider three sides to every story that they're told by the public. Whether they're an innocent bystander or an actual criminal that they've arrested. So, what does it deal with? Well, it deals with all sorts of things. Politics, um, the state of the world at the time, uh, and then the, the side that I really liked, as I say, was and the truth, the third side to the story, um, because that's quite introspective. And I'm quite an introspective character. I'm not particularly outgoing or exuberant, despite what these videos may come across as. So, everything under the sun, rise and sh it's a three part thing basically. Um, it goes on for, tw I don't know, 15 minutes. It's called Everything Under the Sun. It's got three, si it's three sides to it. Again, it's very confusing all this. Uh, rise and shine, am I ever gonna change? Which was a question I still ask myself, but not quite as much. And who cares? <laughs> so, it's kind of cathartic in that respect. It's a good listen, even today. Um, Sai, uh, the first part of it, yours, is quite hard rocking, so that's enjoyable. I do like uh, the pace and the power behind it, and Nuno was um, Nuno Battencourt, or Bettencourt, whatever his name is, I think it's Batten. Battencourt is extremely good, no pun intended, on guitar. His riffs and his solos are superb. Um, we have Gary Sharon on vocals, Pat Badger on bass, and who do we have on drums? I can never remember the guy's name, but I'm not going to um, do this without giving him a name check, because that would not be fair on the guy. Let's have a look. Uh, Paul Geary, who, quite frankly, I've never heard of since or before. But he's very good, obviously. Um, otherwise, he would not be in a band like Extreme. Now, this record didn't really do that well because it had no hits on it. There were no obvious hits on this. It's it's quite proggy in respect, in some respects. There's a lot of keyboard on it. It's quite progressive, this record. Um, but I don't think it holds up 25 years later, whatever it is, because some of it's just a little dull. And uh, once you get into that side two section, the bit called Mine, Seven Sundays, Tragic Comic, Our Father Stop the World, God Isn't Dead. I mean, that's five songs here, which quite frankly I can do without. They're a little bit dull, they're a little bit boring. 
you know, then it picks up on, on side three, the truth, and the truth, whatever it's called. Uh, so, yeah, that whole middle section, you can kind of do without it. It's a single disc, it sounds terrific, don't, um, don't be fooled by, by that, it does sound terrific. The actual production is superb. Um, but it didn't sell anywhere near, I don't even think this touched a million. It didn't even touch a million sales worldwide. Whereas the one that came before it, Extreme 2, Porno Graffiti, brilliant title, featuring obviously more than words, and some other cracking songs, including a lot of good hard rock. That only, sorry, that sold double platinum worldwide. Minimum. Now, obviously since then, it's obviously gone on to sell more, but you know, these certifications are reasonably old. Um, I don't think we do them that often for many bands. So what did it do on the charts? Well, let's have a look. It didn't do that well, as I said. It wasn't a massive seller by any degree. It, uh, let's see, what did it do? I mean, it did okay in Finland, number three. Again, those Finnish guys. In the UK, now this is a surprise to me. In the UK, we put this to number two. Now that, it must have been on the back of porno graffiti. It must have been, more than words. We put this to number two. Uh, the Americans, number 10. Japan, number five. So, you know, um, and Canada, number 10. And as I say, barely squeaked a million sales worldwide. Probably now, 25 years, 25 years later, it's done a million worldwide. But this is one that people don't really talk about from the band. Um, it's still better than what they did recently. They released an album recently, which, quite frankly, left me cold. There's about one good song on it, with a terrific guitar solo. The first song from Nuno, who is enormously underrated as a player. But very flashy and I think any band that he was in would have to be kind of all about him a bit like Steve Vai I think Nuno would be better off as a solo artist just like Steve Vai anyway have you heard three sides to every story um, most of the reviews that I've gleaned they they were kind of uh, average a lot of the reviews said it's okay, it's okay, but there's no obvious hits on here. And in places it seems like they're trying to just fill up the CD. Because this is a long record. There's a 70 minutes plus of music on here. This is a, a real commitment in your time. This is going to make you stay up late. So, and it's actually produced by Nuno himself and co-produced by Bob St. John who is a name in production, music production, and has been over the years. As I said, have you heard it? If you haven't, give it a listen. See what you think. It's okay in places. I would skip the whole middle part of it, quite frankly. You're not missing anything. But I think the rest of it, I think you'll like it. And if you are of an introspective bent, which a lot of rock music fans tend to be, and there's nothing wrong with that, not everybody can be exuberant all the time, flying around the place like a wild thing. Um, a lot of people can be just, you know, themselves and calm and collected. So give it a listen, I think you'll like it. As I say, particularly side one and side three. So that is extreme. Three sides to every story from 1992.